I'm Leonard Cole, and I've written a, a book about my cousin, Fred Rhinus, who is a Nobel Prize winner. He got the prize for his discovery with a colleague uh, of a subatomic particle called the neutrino. Uh, after he died, which was a little over 20 years ago, uh, I uh, thought about uh, the fact that he won the Nobel Prize in physics and was awarded in that in 1995, which was some uh, 40 years after the actual discovery. Uh, I knew Fred as a child very well. Uh, he took me when I was a youngster to the Museum of Science and Industry. My interest in science really began, I guess, when my mother took me about when I was around eight years old to see uh, the cosmos through the Hayden Planetarium in New York City at that time. And uh, some time after, Fred took me to the Museum of Science and Industry. So I've had a lifelong interest in science and it fits into uh, my particular interest in not only Fred as a charismatic, exciting individual, but uh, expressing an interest in the great discovery that he made. Uh, and so I, in writing the book that I've done, it's called Chasing the Ghost, because the neutrino itself is a known even to this day as a ghost particle. There are trillions and trillions of neutrinos constantly rushing through the universe throughout. Uh, and these tiny minuscule particles are quite elusive. And one of the more fascinating parts that we can talk about when we talk about this subatomic particle, the neutrino, is that although extremely tiny, minuscule even for a particle, uh, trillions of them pass through every human being's body on their way out through the cosmos, speeding at close to the speed of light. And uh, they uh, pass through everybody in the numbers of trillions, every second of your existence. And they also travel through all other solid substances unlike virtually all other particles. So this fascination that Fred had with them is that they were considered right through the 1930s and into the 40s and into the early 50s by most scientists as undetectable because they were elusive. They didn't interact with other particles. Only one very, very rare incident out of every numbers of trillions that went through a detector would actually locate one of these by way of an interaction, an unusually rare interaction, that left a signal of a, of a kind of light in a, in a detection medium, a detection apparatus. So Fred was the first guy, along with his colleague, to make a uh, detection of neutrinos. The uh, science has continued to advance since that time, that early time in the 50s. And today there are thousands of neutrino physicists who are working on this fascinating uh, subatomic particle, which many have said actually uh, is a basis for how the universe has evolved and answers other interesting questions about the composition and the evolution of the universe. So Fred also had phenomenal talents beyond just being a great physicist. He was an actor. He had a great operatic voice. He acted in shows. He sang Gershwin tunes and Gilbert and Sullivan tunes on a stage. He performed. In fact, just a couple of years after he had uh, made the discovery, in 1959, he was uh, the Clarence Darrow character in Inherit the Wind. Uh, this is a story of uh, Clarence Darrow, who was a terrific uh, attorney, civil rights attorney, who um, in the show Inherit the Wind, uh, had his standoff with the idea that some people believed that evolution was a fiction in terms of scientific understanding, but that all truth came from the Bible. And uh, this was close to Fred's interest, not only as an actor and performer, but also as a scientist to be able to take that part. So here is a man who was exciting to be with, and I found that to be true when I was a little kid and then when I got older as well, uh, and, but multi-talented and talked to dozens and dozens of scientists in the preparation and research for this book. And I found that he was adored, loved by so many of his colleagues and students. 
he taught a course called uh, Rainbows and Things. And he talked about the science of rainbows. He had acted in Finian's Rainbow, which was another show on Broadway earlier, but he did a local uh, acting position and had a lead role. And in that role, he sang some beautiful songs, including about the, uh, the story in part about looking for gold at the bottom of a rainbow, the end of a rainbow. So that notion of rainbow kind of stuck with him throughout his life. He taught a course for non-science majors called Rainbows and Things that ultimately um, uh, was the, the core of interest the, developed from getting 20, 25 students who took the class the first year that he taught it. And a couple of years later, there were 250 to 300 students taking the course. Uh, so it was exciting for me to research and hear these uh, stories about Fred and exciting to write the book. And I hope that you would share that excitement by having a look at the book.